Introducing North Carolina. You know, they say there's nothing finer. And for a fact, you'll have to travel far to match the ever-changing pictorial beauty Probably there's no place more beautiful to begin your acquaintance than here on the Blue Ridge Parkway, a sky-high avenue that winds along the crest of the Appalachian Range. For more than a century, travelers have visited this mountain country. A hundred years ago, they came on horseback, in stagecoaches, and ox carts. Today's travelers enjoy the same scenic vistas, traveling in comfort and safety along America's most spectacular mountain boulevard, there are no trucks or buses on this highway, not even a telephone pole to mar the visitor's view. Yeah, this young couple look happy. Why not? They're on vacation. And they've come to North Carolina because they've heard that here they will find all the things they want to do and see, all the way from mountain tops to ocean shore. You know, it's not every state that can boast of high ranges and a coastline ideal for swimming, boating, and fishing. What a wonderful way to settle that old, old question, which shall it be, uh, the mountains or the sea? Uh, say, uh, pardon me just a moment, will you? Why, sure. This is your first visit to North Carolina, isn't it? That's right. Don't know much about it, but it sure looks fine from here. Yes, it does look fine. And we think it is fine. You say you don't know much about it, so here goes. Here's where you are, right on the top of the greatest mass of mountains in the eastern United States. East of the mountains lies the rolling country of the Piedmont. Beside fine farmlands, this section contains most of our big industries, powered by electricity developed from the state's abundant water supply. Eastward again are the coastal plains, one of the richest agricultural regions of the South. Rich in history, too, for it was here, nearly three centuries ago, that the first English colony in America was established. A scene very much like this greeted Sir Walter Raleigh's settlers when they first met North Carolina. On this exact spot lived that colony, only to disappear without a trace, leaving a mystery unsolved to this day. On Roanoke Island, during the summer months, a dramatization of that mystery is presented. It commemorates, too, the birthday of Virginia Dare, first child born of English parents in the New World. I baptize thee, Virginia, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come, man, get your ale. Although this first attempt at colonization was a failure, later settlers were successful. Not far from Roanoke Island, North Carolina's first permanent settlement was established, the town of Bath, which centers around this old church built in 1690. Throughout the state, landmarks in its history and progress are found. One of the most stately of these is established in 1725, symbolic of an era of colonial prosperity. This tower overlooks the campus of the University of North Carolina, first state university to open its doors in the United States. Dear to the hearts of all alumni is the old well, for 150 years, the favored meeting place of undergraduates. You know, North Carolina seems to have a knack for staying in the headlines of history. On windswept Kill Devil Hill, this towering pylon marks the spot where the Wright brothers challenged the skies, making the first powered airplane flight. Proud of its past, it is small wonder that the capital city of North Carolina is named Raleigh, 
in memory of those first brave settlers on Roanoke Island. Confident of the future, the people of North Carolina have built many thriving cities. Charlotte, the queen city, largest in the state and center of industry, trade, and transportation. Greensboro's strategic central location makes it an important distribution point. Tobacco capital of the world, Winston-Salem. Durham is another important tobacco and manufacturing center, and it's the home of Duke University, one of the most heavily endowed schools in the United States. These handsome Gothic buildings set in a spacious campus attract many visitors. The principal seaport is Wilmington, situated on the Cape Fear River and the Inland Waterway with channel and harbor for ocean-going ships. In a setting of emerald forest and blue hills is the city of Asheville, high on a plateau between the Blue Ridges and the Great Smoky Mountains. Hub of an extensive resort area, it is the metropolis of western North Carolina. Among Asheville's many attractions is Biltmore House, a chateau that has been called the most beautiful home in America. Now open to visitors, Biltmore House contains a treasury of famous paintings and other well-known and historic works of art. Say, that's all right. I'd like to see some of those places for myself. And there's no reason why you shouldn't. But you'll see lots of other things in the state you might like to know something about. Take that cigarette you're smoking. You may not know it, but seven out of every ten American cigarettes come from this state. It begins here. Fields of green, growing tobacco, stretching from the Piedmont through the coastal plains. In late summer, scenes like this are on every hand. Farmers harvesting the state's most profitable cash crop, stripping the matured leaves from the stalks. At this busy season, the whole family and all the neighbors turn out to prepare the valuable crop for market. The leaves are made into hands. The hands are strung onto sticks, ready to be placed in the tobacco barns where the leaves will be cured by the heat from wood or oil fires. This curing gives the tobacco the characteristic golden color, which means market time, money in the bank, the necessities and the comforts of life for the whole farm family. In the town of Wilson, the traveler may visit the largest bright leaf tobacco market in all the world. He may even see and hear one of the famous auctioneers as he conducts a tobacco sale. And here's an auction in progress. Let's watch and listen. Long years of careful aging are still necessary before this tobacco will be ready for final processing. And then, in huge factories in Winston-Salem, Durham, and Reedsville, the long process which started in the fields culminates in the manufacture of best-known brands of cigarettes and smoking tobacco. This factory ships an entire trainload of cigarettes every day of the year 
And brother, that's a lot of smoking. There's another interesting angle to this cigarette business. Most of the paper used in cigarette manufacture comes from this large modern plant. A nationwide search for water of unexcelled purity ended here on the banks of the sparkling Davidson River near Brevard. Domestic flax and pure water are essential items in the production of this super high quality paper. The big rolls are cut into little ones. Each of these small rolls contains enough paper for 85,000 cigarettes. Fishing is one of the more important occupations along the coast. Strangely enough, the most important catch is not primarily a food fish, but the fabulous menhaden. Always found in enormous schools, these fish seem to favor the North Carolina shore. As a result, an important marine industry has been developed based on the valuable oil extracted from the menhaden. Oil used in soaps, in paints, used as a lubricant, as a medicine, and as a sizing for textiles. Even the residue is valuable as a high protein stock feed and for fertilizers. Well, I guess it's true most everywhere. Old and young alike go for goobers, for crisp, freshly roasted peanuts. North Carolina grows her own with a good share for the rest of the country. The loamy soil of the coastal plain is dotted with hundreds of fields. In early autumn, the tuber-laden vines are taken from the ground and stacked to dry. Later, harvesting equipment moves into the fields to separate the nuts from the dried vines. Vines are baled and become an important and highly nutritious addition to the diet of farm herds. Peanuts themselves are made into dozens of products and hundreds of byproducts. But the most familiar form is Old Man Peanut himself, roasted to a golden, tasty brown. Just peanuts, you say? Yes, but peanuts are big business in North Carolina. More North Carolinians earn their livelihood from the manufacture of textiles than from any other industrial endeavor. The state grows a lot of its own cotton, and it's a good customer for its cotton-growing neighbors. Fleecy bowls are transformed into yarn, and the yarn is woven into colorful fabrics, eventually to appear on markets around the world. Here's another kind of weaving, one that might interest the ladies. The manufacture of nylon hose. This is uncolored nylon, awaiting only the magic of chemistry to produce the myriad shades to please any lady's fancy. Burlington is the hosiery capital of the South. There, and in many other cities, this most glamorous item in the feminine wardrobe is produced in millions of units. The traveler in North Carolina will see everywhere evidence of the state's chief natural resource. Over half of the state is forested, and these forests contain the largest reserve of hardwoods remaining in this country.
Hundreds of thousands of acres of the best lands have been set aside as preserves, where scientific lumbering and reforestation assure a never failing supply of this essential material. Mills like this consume a large part of the output of the forests for conversion into paper products of many kinds. Perhaps the paper on which your favorite magazine is printed came from this very factory. Besides paper and paper products, over 3,000 manufacturers, making everything from rayon to radio cabinets, depend on the forests of North Carolina for their raw material supply. Chief among these industries is the manufacture of finished wood products, centered at High Point and Lenore. This state leads all others in the fabrication of fine furniture. Here's an interesting operation. This multiple carver enables one operator to shape 24 identical pieces at one time. Wood from the hills, fabrics from the mills, plus the skilled craftsmanship of the old North State, combined to make furniture that is really fine. Furniture that one day may grace your living room. I guess that's a shin for a while. You've got a long way to go. You'd better get on with that vacation. All right, Mr. Traveler, what's your pleasure? Is it uh, scenery you're after? Modern highways will take you past cascading streams and sparkling waterfalls. To azure lakes rimmed by high hills. to spectacular chimney rock with breathtaking views. To the very top of Mount Mitchell, highest point in the Eastern mountain range. Or up the rugged slopes of old grandfather himself, which geologists claim is the oldest mountain in the world. In spring and early summer, the hills burst into a symphony of color with displays of rhododendron, of mountain laurel, of heather clinging to the rocky hillsides, and the flame azalea found nowhere else on this continent. Everywhere you go, you'll find settings of incomparable beauty. In fact, Nice settings for your own vacation photographs. And you don't have to go far west to enjoy dude ranching. Modern, mile-high resorts provide facilities, plain or fancy, for the Wild West fan. Most popular national park in America is in the Great Smoky Mountains. Readily accessible by automobile, it is threaded by marked and graded trails, leading the adventurous vacationist to points of interest denied to casual motorists. While you're visiting the park, don't be surprised if you meet a friendly bear or two. Interesting acquaintance, yes, but uh, don't get too chummy. Mr. Bear's idea of a love pat is the human equivalent of a knockout punch. If meeting bears or footing it aren't your ideas of fun, you may prefer the comforts of one of the many modern resort hotels or lodges with sports and recreation right outside the door. Something uh, more modest? Many visitors prefer a cozy mountain cabin. This one is near Fontana Dam, highest water barrier in the east. This huge structure creates only one of dozens of lakes, providing water sports and year-round fishing for vacationists. If you're a real traveler, 
you'll be interested in the folkways of the hardy people who populate this state. In the shadow of Old Grandfather, a yearly festival known as Singing on the Mountain brings spectators and contestants from all of the South Appalachian range. Young and old alike turn out to hear the ancient ballads of the hills. Like the old songs, the old ways of doing things persist in many homes. The products of the modern textile industry of North Carolina mean little to this elderly lady. Like her mother and her grandmother, she cards and spins her own yarn to make garments for her family. Yes, strange as it seems, the people of North Carolina who have led the South in development of machine industries have maintained their pride in fine hand workmanship. The carving of beautiful and quaint figures from hardwoods is only one of the many handcraft skills. Old-fashioned drudgery, you say? Not at all. Within a hundred miles of Asheville, more than 3,000 persons make all or part of their living from the creation of examples of fine handicraft, eagerly sought by travelers as treasured mementos of their visit. Mementos ranging from the humorous to the sublime. Say, this is a pretty scene. Looks like one of our vacationing friends. And sure enough, it is. I guess she doesn't realize that outfit she's wearing would scare any respectable trout a mile downstream. Hey, what's this? Looks like she's hooked one. And she has. Well, it just goes to show you. North Carolina streams are kept so well stocked that even an amateur angler has a chance. The state even reserves one trout stream exclusively for women fishermen. I um, wonder where her husband is. Well, no sooner said than done. Hey, what's he up to anyway? Mmm, looks like a little campfire cookery in progress. Let's go over and see what gives. Trout on the fire, beauties too. And hot biscuits. Say, hey, this lad is quite talented. Or if picnicking is more in your line, why not pack a basket and visit one of the state parks or numerous recreational areas set aside for your pleasure? What that keen outdoor air does to the appetite is nobody's business but your own. An interesting novelty is this bridge built across the highway for the exclusive use of horsemen. Hundreds of miles of bridle paths wind through the forested hills of western North Carolina. If you don't want a horse, borrow his shoes. You can still have fun. Besides mountain streams, the bass lakes are popular with inland fishermen, none more so than Lake Lure. In its alpine setting, where swimming, boating, and aquaplaning round out the vacationist package of pleasure. Let's leave the mountains for a while and drive down through the rolling Piedmont into the sand hills. Once an ancient sea covered this country and left behind it the characteristic dunes of golden sand, the dwelling place of the stately longleaf pine, of holly and dogwood. For reasons unexplained by science, the sand hills enjoy an unusually mild climate, crisp, cool nights, sunny, brilliant days. So it's no wonder that for half a century, this region has been a popular winter resort. And it's no wonder, too, that golfers flock to these resorts in such numbers, because even when it showers, the thirsty sand absorbs the water so quickly that in a matter of minutes, a foursome can resume play. Many of today's famous players won their first recognition in tournaments on these championship courses. Riding, fox hunting, tennis, 
and other outdoor sports can be enjoyed almost every day. The 300-mile coastline presents two distinct realms of exploration. The Outer Banks comprise a maritime wilderness, appealing strongly to the adventurous sportsmen and to those who would leave the madding crowd behind. Rough trails lead to Hatteras and Ocracoke, the graveyard of the Atlantic, where many a brave ship has met disaster. Coast Guardsmen stationed on this windswept bar have been awarded more Congressional Medals of Honor per capita than any other group. The little fishing village of Hatteras looks peaceful indeed, and it is peaceful. No police, no sheriff, and not even a jail. But the fishing, it's wonderful. In contrast to the isolation of the Outer Banks are the easily accessible beach resorts. Sun and sand and the tumbling surf make these popular playgrounds. There's fishing here, too. In the surf, if you like. Or try your luck from a pier. But some sportsmen take to the open seas. And there in the indigo waters of the Gulf Stream await challenging amberjack, fighting dolphin, the vicious barracuda, ciro, sailfish, bonito, and the incomparable blue marlin. The growing legion of small craft sailormen find in North Carolina's sounds and rivers many hospitable waters for their graceful sport. If you like a little more speed, you might try this one on for size. Better practice up a while first, though. It's not as easy as it looks. If you're wondering how to get off these things, just watch. Simple, isn't it? Uh, still more speed? Here it is, and plenty of it, on one of North Carolina's many broad rivers. saw in the mountains, there's plenty of scenery in other parts of North Carolina. In fact, uh, the scenery along the beach is unusually pretty. And look who's taking in all this scenery. It's our friends again. They've done what they set out to do, and in one vacation, they've had a glorious week in the mountains, and another week of sunshine and fun on the seashore. Wonder how they liked it. Uh, tell me, have you enjoyed your Tar Heel vacation? We sure have. And we really met North Carolina. I'm glad you did. But I knew you'd like it. Because for fun, in winter, summer, spring, or fall, North Carolina has them all.